Morgan, how did you come to meet then Congressman Bob Vilner in 2009? I am a school psychologist and I confront daily the pain of America's children and families. And I recognized that family is our foundation and that we needed to start paying attention in this country. So I founded a national initiative to establish the well-being of America's kids as our highest priority. In 2009, around January, the First Lady came out with a statement that America's children must know that they come first. And with that, that reflecting of our mission, I contacted Bishop George D. McKinney, a well-known and well-respected San Diegan, and very well-known in Washington, D.C., and an advisor on my board. And I asked him, who do you know that can get this mission to the White House? And he organized a meeting with Congressman Filner and our team. So you had one meeting with Congressman Filner, with other people from your initiative, but then you say the Congressman approached you about a private meeting. What reason did he give you? He phoned me at home and he asked for this meeting because he wanted to know in his vernacular who in the hell you are. And after I got over the uh, abrasiveness of that, I thought, all right, he's needing to vet me before he takes this to the Obamas. So we arranged for a meeting later in the week at Marie Callender's in the afternoon, a public place directly across the street from his congressional office. What happened at that meeting? I gave him my resume because that to me was what he was asking for. Um, when I arrived at Marie Callender's, his assistant, Willie Blair, met me and suggested I sit back in a booth. Uh, the restaurant, as I remember, was empty. I sat facing the door, and when the congressman came in, he came over, we chatted briefly, and then I explained that I thought it was the meeting was about knowing me better. So I handed him my resume. He glanced at the first page very briefly and set it aside. And then he told me that he had already taken the mission to M Mrs. Obama and that she had requested a memo as to how the campaign would address the escalating violence in America's military families. Um, of course, I was thrilled to hear this, except then he, his face just became rather strange, and he was staring at me, and then said, your eyes have bewitched me. And it was just a surreal moment. Um, I did think about it later in that he was blaming me for what was about to happen. It was my eyes that had bewitched him, that he wasn't responsible for some magical power I had. Um, and then the next thing I knew, he got up from across the booth. He came over and sat next to me, penning me into my side of the booth, and wanted to kiss me. And I started to ask him, what would your wife say if she was sitting here? And he just laughed this really odd laugh, as if that was the craziest thing he had ever heard. And then he tried to move my face towards his to kiss me on the mouth. And now listening to the stories of the other victims, it probably wouldn't have been on my mouth. It would have been in my mouth. I um, turned away and then started negotiating with him. Would you please go back so we can continue this meeting? This is an important topic. And he would say, not until you kiss me. He tried four times, and I, I understand about the Filner neck hold. I, this was like suspension in space and time for me. It was just so out of the context of my life and my expectation around the mission of the America's Angel campaign that um, I was negotiating with him, but I remember his hands on me. I don't know, I don't remember if they were on my neck, but it was very frightening and insulting um, 
and confusing all at the same time. What went through your mind as all of this was unfolding? What, what the emotion was that it had been 24 years since I had been physically restrained by a man. And in that 24 years, I have done everything to empower my life that that would never happen to me again. And here it was out of the blue with a United States congressman around the mission of the innocence of our children. After four attempts to try to kiss me and me asking him to please go back, please let me out, and he wouldn't move because I wouldn't kiss him, his phone rang and he stopped, he picked up the phone and took the call and said he had to get back to his office. So he collected the information I had brought about the campaign and left, left me sitting there to think about, try to make sense of what had just happened. So Morgan, you're a school psychologist. You've heard about the other allegations, sexual harassment allegations coming from other women leveled at Mayor Bob Filner. What, as a clinician, what does conduct like this, alleged conduct like this, say about a person? One of the things I have done in these last four years is to write a book to give women the tools to empower their lives. Chapter 18 is on the narcissistic male personality. And on page 193, I list the careers that these narcissistic men will choose in order to position themselves in places of power and, and to attract women. And as I wrote this chapter a few months ago, I listed these careers, but I saved for last the one that was most important to me, and that was politician. That was the last career I listed. And as I typed that word in, it was all I could do not to just insert Bob Filner. Morgan, your alleged account encounter with the mayor took place more than four years ago. Why are you speaking about this now? When it happened, um, it wasn't about me. It was about getting this mission forward into the national conversation. And then it was also uh, about writing my book. Now that the book is published. Um, I'm, I'm standing for the sisters, the women, and I recognize that the more of us that come out um, and, and say what happened to us, and we're seeing the pattern within our stories, the more we empower other women to speak out. Morgan Rose, thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you.